So you're in Colorado and you have one weekend. You're gonna go where? Manitou Springs. We're gonna do a vacation trip to Manitou Springs. It's historic. It really actually has springs. Uh, we'll show you those. It's got fantastic hotels, great food, lots of outdoor activities, super cool people, lots of hippies. Where can you go wrong? It's awesome. Great in the summer, but very crowded. Less crowded in the fall, winter, and spring. We're in spring and it's gonna be not as crazy. So come along with us, have a great time. We're gonna show you all the fun things to do in Manitou over a weekend. Let's go. We're at Adams Mountain Cafe, it's in Manitou Springs. It's kind of right on the bubble where Manitou starts and Old Colorado City ends. Adams Mountain Cafe has been here forever. Their food is fantastic. They're very much a vegan, vegetarian oriented restaurant with very much friendly menu regarding vegan and vegetarian. They're open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner depending on what time of year and what day you're going. Especially the end of the week is more dinner oriented. Uh, breakfast and lunch all the rest of the time. Beautiful building, big open space. I remember when they moved here, we were so super happy that they had more space. Cool art on the walls, lots of seating, open beams, nice bar. No matter what you're looking for, they've got something, unless what you're looking for is super meaty. Again, they're not into the meaty side of things. They're definitely into the vegetarian, vegan side of things. Great restaurant. If you are in Manitou, and you need to get filled up in the morning before you're gonna hit that incline or go do some shopping or all of that, Adams Mountain Cafe is the place to go. And then we're gonna hit up the incline. The incline is a fantastic way to get your workout going. With that workout, oh man, know what you're in for. It is a challenge. If you are from lower elevations, even if it's cool out, I recommend that you don't wear tons of clothes, but you're gonna to wanna to bring a jacket. Number one thing I see, see people doing is they overdress. They bring tons and tons of clothes and then they end up carrying it up most of the time because they're hot and tired. The other thing is stay hydrated. That's true of everything you do here, especially if you're from a lower elevation, it's gonna help with any sort of altitude sickness. Get lots of rest. And another huge one, don't forget your sunscreen. If you're from lowlands, you can go a long time without getting a sunburn. Up here, the radiation is much more intense and you will get a sunburn. Here's how you do the incline. There's a little bit to it. You can just drive up and park. You do have to make a reservation. If you don't and there are available ones, there's often folks there that will sign you up right there at the base of the incline. But if you plan ahead, make a reservation ahead. There are numerous uh, lots that you can park in. This one, the Hiawatha that we're at now is the biggest, it's the easiest. It used to be free, but now they charge. You can run an app to your phone or they set up to where you can pay through your phone, which is pretty cool and convenient. So you don't have to get back and keep feeding the meter. You can just pump it through your phone, which are these here. You gotta put a little thing on your dash if you don't pay through your phone, but it is a super cool way to do it. This is where you get on the Cog Railroad, which we may do later in the week. It's super awesome. There's coming. So if you continue up this way and you take a right just past that building down there, you can go up to the Bar Trail parking lot, which is just a little bit up that way. If you want to do Bar Trail, it goes next to the incline. You can see the incline in the picture here, but you can walk across right about through there. And then we'll drop you off right in here, which is by the beginning of the incline. And it is no joke, it's only a mile, right? But everybody thinks that this is gonna be, they can suffer through anything for a mile. That's not the case. It can take people quite a long time. Some people do have health issues. I've seen some injuries, but you start at 6,600. You have a couple of different turnarounds. We kind of consider this one like the halfway point. This is that where you can catch a piece of the bar trail, come down that way. Right, you're gonna go up 2,768 steps total. That turn around is at 18. Summit, 8550. It's a bit of a trek. Let's go.
All right, a little out of breath. Been at the top of the incline. We made it. Uh, didn't doubt that we would, but it's a go. The older I get, the more of a go it is, the more hard it gets, but totally worth it if you can make it to the top. Take your time, take some water, take a rest here and there if you need to. Uh, I find that if I don't take a rest, it's a little more fun and exciting, but try to just, just grind it out. The false summit, if you've never been there, it's depressing. It's fun to play, like I said, fun to play tricks on your friends with it. But if you're in Colorado Springs or you're in Manitou and you want to get the incline, I think it's absolutely worth the thing. If you're up for a challenge, it's very challenging. It's a great way to spend a, a morning or an afternoon. And then you get to go down and have amazing food and then hit Sun Water Spa and take a soak. As for going down, there's two options. Go down the way you came, which a lot of people kind of fight against, but if you're gonna do it a bunch or you wanna be fast, it's the only way to go. If you wanna have a slower, easier go, you take Bar Trail down, it switchbacks all the way down. It's about three miles to the bottom instead of about one mile to the bottom, but it's a lot easier on your legs. You're a lot less likely to slip and fall and beat yourself up because it's pretty steep, pretty gravelly, and has a bit of danger. I've seen people eat it before. So if you're in Manitou, you have to go to the Loop. It's almost like a requirement. Now, the Loop has a very diverse menu of Mexican food, and it varies from absolutely amazing to what I would call like tourist, white people, Mexican. Not the best, but they're covering it. A very, very diverse group of people, right? It's a tourist destination. It, this is right at the end of the incline. It's right across from hotels, and they're doing exactly what they should do which is make good Mexican food with lots of diverse options and fantastic margaritas. That's what you come here for. The food is good, the margaritas are great. They also have beer, they got full cocktail lists, like all the things. Lots and lots and lots of seating. Most of the seating is, is got views of what's going on outside in Manitou, which if you've never people watched in Manitou Springs, you probably should add that to your list of things to do on vacation. It's worth your time. So we came in and of course, I got tacos, cause that's what I do. Um, they did hook me up a little bit, I ordered something outside the box, but I got uh, quite a few different tacos. They have a, a trio where you can get three different things off the menu, I went for all tacos. I got the shredded beef, the chicken, and the ground beef. I also got the carbon and the al pastor tacos, which is a five order. Um, they gave me a mix and match, which again, you're really not supposed to do, but they hooked me up. All of this food is fantastic, I loved it all. If I was gonna complain about anything, the only thing I really would be critical of is when you're going for that plain style of taco, the ground beef was definitely like lacking a punch, but it was a tasty taco. They put a nice char on the tortilla, which was perfectly wonderful. The al pastor, that was the one, right? That's the best taco on the, on the menu by far. But this place, it's not a taco place. Like this is where you get like steak and shrimp fajitas. This is where you get, you know, something smothered or a mole or a mocajete, like that's their thing. So when in Manitou, get your lunch or your dinner at the Lube. Give the Mexican a try. Lots of diversity, cool seating, great location. Back in the day, this is a place where you get done doing the incline, you come down and you get yourself a margarita and some tacos and then you head home at Mantu Cliff Dwellings. This is probably like the most thought of thing when you think of Manitou and being a tourist. I can't think of anything that says Manitou tourism any more than this, except maybe the incline. And those are probably the two things. Cliff Dwellings are great, and not great. Now you're gonna have to go watch to the end of this part of the video to see what I think is not great. But what's great is these are replicas of Anastasia ruins that you can walk all around. Yeah, it's not real, but it gives you the feel of real. So that's pretty cool. We'll talk about at the end what I think is not cool. Get to that in a little bit. So this is such a cool thing to do with kids, right? If you've got kids and you don't come here, you're probably doing them a disservice. To be honest, every Colorado Springs native has been here almost for sure without exception because this is one of the main field trips that they do every year. And it's designed for kids, right? Every single place you go is set up to have a good time. 
and crawl around and burn that energy that you have from sitting in the car all the way drive to Colorado Springs. So obvious clear evidence that the native were very, very ingenious and in they created pipe and safety regulations. Follow all of OSHA's rules. <laughs> sticks from it were the, were the throwing sticks and the leaves are put with salt and water and used as a laxative. So after you go through the cliff dwellings part, the actual dwelling, right, you gotta go through the gift shop. That's probably the thing I like the least. The museum is a little bit of a cultural appropriation and the gift shop is certainly that. Now, they do have cool things. I'm not gonna knock it. Everybody needs a little tourist trinket, but the only complaint you can make about this place, in my opinion, is the cultural appropriation where they're kind of taking cultures that don't exist in this area and the things that didn't really fit and using it for commercial gain. But let's be honest, if they can't make a buck, they can't stay open. And you wanna keep the door lights on and the doors open? Buy some trinkets. I feel like no trip to Manitou would be complete without the Rocky Mountain beignets. This is a tiny little shop. Uh, it's open till eight at night. This opens pretty early in the morning. They serve very, very few things. Beignets, beignet bites, and some coffee type drinks, and that's pretty much it. Now, if you know me, you know I love all fried doughs and batters of all kinds, with donuts being my least favorite, and beignets probably being my most favorite. So I might be biased here, but these beignets are very good. Are they Cafe du Monde? No, they're not the quality of Cafe du Monde. Are they absolutely worth the $6? Yes, yes they are. You should have a beignet. All right, no trip to Manitou would be complete without a visit to Cave of the Winds. Cave of the Winds has all kinds of different experiences for different ages. The main tour is the one you see behind me. This one is for all ages. It's got lighting, it goes through, shows to lactites, and it's the history and all the things you'd expect, but it's a much shorter tour and a little easier for the little ones. The other tour is the Lantern Ghost Story Tour. That is pretty dang cool. You get these little lanterns, it's made of a candle with a bucket and it reflects a little bit and you go through and they tell you all the stories that have to do with um, the founding and all kinds of ghost stories, paranormal stories and the tragedy that happened to some of the, the people that were here and founded this. Great tour, super fun. Our host Jeremy did an amazing job. He totally got into it and made you feel excited and it was just a ton of fun, great stories. They've also got a kind of a zip line tour. It's seasonal though. They've got a via ferrata, also seasonal, some axe throwing. They've got snacks. They've got a great gift shop with all kinds of Colorado goodies and booty. Um, little history, natural history bit. It's just super cool. And then they've got the bat zip line thing, which is you sit in a seat and it shoots you out over the gorge. Also super fun. And last but not least is a little bit of a ropes course for kids and the slides and things like that. So after you've been out being a tourist, being a shopper, seeing all the things, you're gonna need lunch. Lunch today, Sierra Cafe, it's a Mediterranean restaurant. It is good. Now don't let the ambiance fool you. It's just some wood paneling and some benches. It's a little bit beat up and wore out, but the food is wonderful. Um, I've been to the Middle East. I've been to Jordan. Um, I've ate shawarma every single night I was there. Every single night, pretty much. Um, this is as good as it gets in the United States. Um, I've had some better hummus in places. I've had some better baklava in places. I don't know I've had anywhere where everything was as equally good. That beef shawarma gyro shawarma was absolutely awesome. So much flavor wrapped up in a pita. I mean, so just so good, just so good. I, I don't even know what to tell you. Um, the baklava was wonderful. 
wonderful. I think the only place I've maybe ever had better was a really awesome place in Anaheim. And they did a little bit different style of it, but the baklava was great. They also have a espresso bar and smoothies. They were out of Turkish coffee, which I'm so sad about because I love Turkish coffee so, so much. And it would have gone perfect with these baklavas. They make the baklava in house, at least the two of the three. The almond and the walnut, they're made in house. They're really, really good. I, I wish I could tell you how good, like the words don't seem to do it. So if you're in Manitou Springs and you've been out having a good time all morning and it's time for lunch or dinner, Get in there to Sahara Cafe. I mean, Sahara Cafe is, is one of the highest rated restaurants in Manitou Springs, and for good reason, it deserves the ratings, like I say. It's just great service, good food, it's quick, it's healthy. How can you go wrong? Get in here and give it a try. So no trip to Manitou would be complete without a trip to the Penny Arcade. Games cost between actually a penny and like a dollar and a half depending on the game. All kinds of fun stuff to do. Tons and tons and tons of game. It does close, even though stuff's outside, it does close, most of the buildings close up. They've got a uh, ski ball, they've got pinball, they've got old classic games from the 1930s. You can win prizes and tickets to return for prizes. All the things you'd expect. Every kid and everyone who's a kid at heart loves this place. If you're in Manitou and you don't go to the Penny Arcade, you're going to regret it. You're going to be so sad. Besides, when was the last time you got to ride Dino? I mean, come on. <laughs> Just in time. It opens at 11. I think it closes at like 5 right now, but in the summer it's open super late. Um, every local comes down here. This is like kind of a dating place, a fun place to come hang out with your with your friends, with your girlfriend. There's just so much to do. All right, so we stayed at the Cliff House. We've chosen the Cliff House. It's kind of a Manitou institution. It's got a long and varied history. It started as the, uh, just an inn that was a boarding house, and then it got improved and uh, made into a much bigger, from about a 20-room place to a 56-room, I think, and then bought out again. was at one point up to 200. Um, it's right across the street from the Manitou Springs, one of the springs. Uh, the mineral water is believed to have healing powers and all kinds of cool stuff like that and be good and healthy for you. So uh, they would uh, go across the street and get it. They'd bring it back to you. So it was kind of a spa thing going on for wealthy clients in the early uh, turn of the 20th century. Then that's had some crazy issues. Part of it flooded, um, then a bunch of it burned down in the 80s. The fourth floor caught fire and burned down bad, bad, bad. It was vacant for like 16 years. So big, varied history. Cool hotel, lots of different kinds of rooms. It's very much set up to feel like you're in an old building, an old hotel while it has new amenities. It has that old feel. That's exactly what they're going for. Um, I really like this place. It's neat. Um, they've got valet parking. They've got a nice restaurant on site, good quality food. We did not have desserts, but I would absolutely come back here for just desserts. We're always looking for a dessert place. Um, and this might be the new one. They've got cool artifacts around the hotel, some older um, artifacts that were found, I think, during construction and to do with the past history. There's lots of photos to do with the past history. A lot of the rooms are named after famous people that have been here. So there's like a Wild Bill Cody. Um, I asked the front uh, staff what they thought the two best rooms were. They thought that the Teddy Roosevelt was a really good one and the Thomas Edison. But there's quite a lot of different uh, themed rooms that have a theme to do with the previous occupants and people that have stayed at this super historied hotel. It's got a huge front deck, it's got a beautiful lobby that you can actually have desserts and coffee and things like that in. Uh, breakfast is included with your stay and it was a very, very good breakfast. So let's talk about the food. Um, the Cliff House dining room has a white tablecloth kind of a place, excellent wine menu. I mean excellent i'm not a wine guy they do have a pretty good beer menu but it is all bottled and canned beers uh, from local and uh, imported from around the world um, service was very good um, enjoyed every bit of it um, 
probably, if anything, if I was going to make a little fun of it, a little stodgy for me, if you've been watching any British shows. Uh, the service was just a little bit too uppity, a little too high class, a little too white cloth. Um, while it's not that much at all, uh, don't get me wrong, it's not that uppity, but it was, uh, you know, all of the silverware on the table and they remove it when you don't need it. That kind of service. Uh, so I had the duck. The duck is a comfy duck leg and a uh, pan fried breast. Fantastic. I actually like the comfy better. Amazing flavor on it, amazing. But the breast was medium rare. It was beautiful, it was moist. The skin had a nice crunch and chew to it. It was served with some uh, bitter cherries, a sort of brown sauce, a rich gravy-ish sauce that was super choice. Had grits that were a brie cheese flavored grit and then bacon and Brussels sprouts. Everything was cooked perfectly. I enjoyed every bit of it. My wife was not quite as hungry and she wanted to have the uh, had sweet potato gnocchi with a, uh, a wild mushroom sauce. Uh, really tasty and I mean really tasty. Even the bread was great. They were eating bread and butter. Uh, the rosemary sourdough, it was fantastic. Service was great, like I say, I literally have nothing wrong to say about it. I would absolutely come back here again for a meal. The Cliff House, great place to stay, great place to eat. Right at the end of Manitou, you can walk right across the street to other fun amusements, which we'll catch in later videos. The arcade, the Penny Arcade's right there. The fountains for the well, Manitou Springs is right there. I'm looking out my window exactly at the incline, because we're right where the incline is. Um, there's some fun little, uh, like local bars, Armadillo Ranch and Armadillo Ranch, Armadillo Ranch and Royal are right across the street. Zahara Cafe right there, so you can stay here and do all kinds of other cool, fun things and be within steps of this amazing historic hotel. So if you're in Manitou, whether you just did the incline or you did Cave of the Winds or you did the Cliff Dwellings or the Car Museum or you just went shopping. At the end, right by Ruxton, on the roundabout, then roundabout that's kind of sort of the end of the town, right across from the loop, is a staple, the Mate Factory. Now, if you've never had Mate, I suggest you try it. There's lots of different versions of it. Um, if you get the original Brazilian style Mate, you're in for a treat, but also a little bit of a shock. It is very rich and strong and heavy and and uh, it's just a ton of dark green earthy flavor. If you're not into that kind of thing, I definitely recommend you try one of the, uh, the mate drinks. They've got a mango one and it changes. There's different kinds, but the cold mate drinks are super good. Refreshing, clean, fruity, rich. Um, a 50-50 mix is also good. Uh, I had a mate latte as a dark roast, uh, which is the, the dark mate, uh, mate latte. It does have a bit of a coffee flavor when you get the darker mate. It's rich, it's like a tea coffee combo, of course, with milk. And we got a couple of sandwiches, we had three sandwiches. We tried the Reuben, the Deli Rose, and the Bristol Bay. So the Reuben is exactly what you'd expect. It's a Reuben. Uh, they bake all their own bread in house. Their rye bread is exceptionally good. It's not a super dark rye, but it is a bit darker. The Deli Rose, I'm gonna read it to you because I don't mess it up. Deli Rose, roast beef, corned beef, provolone, pepper jack cheese, tomato, onion, mustard, and their special sauce. If I was gonna guess, I'd say the special sauce is ketchup with something spicy like Tabasco mixed in, but that's just my guess. Um, but it is a little bit spicy, and then it's on a buttery onion roll. Honestly, that sandwich was really interesting, like different than the normal, very tasty. Um, some of the people that I was with chose that as their favorite, and some chose the Bristol Bay. The Bristol Bay is a salmon, cheddar cheese, provolone cheese, lettuce, tomato, onions, mustard, tartar sauce on a buttery roll. I think that was my favorite. I really, really liked the Bristol Bay. Um, normally, I'm definitely a Reuben guy. Of the three, actually, I would say the Reuben was my least favorite. The Reuben is good, but it's, it's just a Reuben. The others were a little bit more exciting, a little bit different, a little bit outside the box. We got the strawberry banana shake. Smoothie, I should say, smoothie. It's just a smoothie. It was good. Uh, definitely here, I think the money, where the money shot is, is what it's named after. Get the mate and get a sandwich. They also have breakfast and, and different things. And these guys are certain, they're open 24 hours a day. 
uh, certain times of the year and certain days of the week. So if you're uh, out and about and you're at three in the morning and you need to eat, Mate Factory might be the place that you go. So it is a, a Manitou Springs staple. You ought to get in here and give it a try. Worth the time. And then go, uh, you know, get some candy at Patsy's afterwards for dessert. You gotta hit up Patsy's, right? Whether you've hit the incline, you've been playing at the arcade, you're at Royals Tavern having a beer, you've just been out shopping and having a good old time, whatever. If you need a little snack, you gotta go over to Patsy's Candy and Gift Shop. Patsy's been here forever, since 1903. Everything's made actually now just up the road, 21st Street. But these guys are known for like funnel cakes and hot dogs and corn dogs and ice cream. But the real cool stuff is the saltwater taffy and the caramel corn. Now here's the story. The story is, Patsy's was up gambling in Cripple Creek. He lost everything he had at the tables. So as collateral for more gambling, he was willing to gamble his recipe for what they call the nut and corn. He gambled it and he lost the recipe. A few months later, Cracker Jacks comes out and it's this exact recipe pretty much. So how crazy is that, that Cracker Jacks, which is famous all over the country, especially on ballparks, might have come from Patsy's Candy Shop. Either way, you need a snack? This stuff is good. Go Manitou. Have you visited Manitou? Are you going to? If you have, or if you do, get down in the comments and tell me the things that you like best, things that you wanna do when you're in Manitou Springs. What's the cool stuff? Where do you wanna go? What do you wanna eat? What do you wanna see? What's the touristy cool things you like? I wanna know. Put it in the comments so I can add it to my next video. Of course, as always, with these videos, hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit the notification. If you know somebody that's thinking about coming to the Colorado Springs, Manitou Springs area, share this video with them. It really does help the channel. And the more we grow, the better content we can create. Oh, now that, that's terrible. I like your words better. Yeah, okay.